Hey, what's up? I'm Carrie Foe, and we're doing high fives with VMP. What a day it's been, rolling O's, a marrow roller, bending corners, no AC in my glass house like a sauna. This is my favorite album from childhood, simply because, I don't know, Leah was very influential, just like style-wise, she was really cool. I don't know, I just wanted to be like her so bad. But I actually had this album and it came with like a DVD of like how to do the dance moves from like the Rock the Boat video. And I remember just like trying to learn how to do the dance. I Care For You, I remember having that on repeat. And I was probably about like nine when this, when this shit came out. So I was a kid kid and I just wanted to be like her. Look how fucking beautiful she is. Like, uh. but yeah. Aaliyah, by Aaliyah, great album. Okay, so Mama's Gun is very special to me because I know all the words to like every song and it got me through a really tough time. So I actually got introduced to this album when I was younger by my brother's baby mama, shout out to Lisa. Um, but then I remember returning to it when I was about 19 I basically had enrolled myself into school in Atlanta to get out of Little Rock because this boy had broke my heart. And this album is just very special because like Green Eyes, if you know, you know. Like that song is just, just it's just a very honest song. It's just about like, you know, a guy like leaving you for another girl and you being jealous about it. And that's just how I felt. And clever, booty, I don't know. I just think there was just so like, I actually want to walk down the aisle to Orange Moon. That I, oh my God, that's such a beautiful song. But I just love Badu's honesty. I don't know if, if it, it could be considered like, oh, why would you say that? Like, why would you be that honest? And to me, I think that's what makes it beautiful is the fact that like, she talks about emotions that a lot of people would deem less than savory. I don't want to say toxic, but it's a little toxic. <laughs> like, it's a little toxic, but also, shit, that's honest. And yeah, I love Mama's Gun. I love Badu. Shout out to her. Um, an album that I can listen to on repeat is The Carter Three by Lil Wayne. I would hope anybody who's ever heard this album could listen to it on repeat. This shit is just, oh, can I cuss? Okay, this shit is iconic. I just remember having this, I also loved Lil Wayne. Like mixtape Wayne was just like, when he was rapping over everybody's beats, but then he like comes with this album, Carter One, Carter Two, Carter Three. Yeah, it's just so many hits on here, like from the top to the bottom, 3P, Mr. Carter, Amelie, Got Money, featuring T-Pain. I actually scream that song a lot often. Let the beat build. It's just an amazing album. Like. I can listen to this shit for the rest of my life. Shout out to Lil Wayne, the GOAT, period. Um, my favorite album from across the world is, sorry, I said um again. Can I start over? <laughs> my favorite, <laughs> I was about to do it again. My favorite album from across the world is Justice, They're from France. I actually got put onto this album by my cousin. He used to be really obsessed with Daft Punk. He used to be really obsessed with them. And so he put me on to, to Justice and we used to play this a lot. This is another one you can play it all the way through. I love the album sequencing on this. It's so good um, how the songs just kind of run like one into the, the, the next. Cause when he played it for me, I was like, wait, this is, different songs. I thought it was just like one long song. And I feel like I was probably a freshman in high school. And so a lot of the music that I found that wasn't rap music or like gospel was through my cousin. And so um, shout out to him for putting me on to Justice. Phantom is one of my favorite songs on here, by the way. So Justice by Justice. 36 Chambers is a perfect album. I mean, it's just from top to bottom. The thing is, what's crazy, I remember hearing this as a kid. Uh, my brother is like 10 years older than me. So anything that he was listening to at the time, I was listening to. I revisited this album when I was like 19 or 20 because I actually had found the CD at a yard sale. <laughs> and so I played it and I was like, wait, this shit is like incredible. Like I know, I know it's like, duh, but it's like, no, like, 
when you're a kid and you hear something, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. But then you go back to it and you're an adult and you can comprehend what's actually happening. Everybody, like everybody in Wu-Tang has their own style, which is like insane. Cause it's like so many members, but you know, like when somebody comes on, you know who you're listening to. Shame on a Nigga is one of my favorite songs ever. Um, Method Man, Protect Your Neck. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. It's just a perfect album to me. I think I could play, this is another one I could play from top to bottom, no skips. I probably do know most of the words to this album. Shout out to that yard sale for, you know, getting me actually like really hip to this album. Wu-Tang is for the children. And so is Carrie Foe. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for chilling with me and talking about my high fives. Um, I love all of these albums and you can get them at Vine Me Please. My album Real Bitches Don't Die is available for pre-order and will be available soon. Uh, you should check it out because it's a very special album. It's about living with grief, but also finding pockets of joy in those moments. Um, I have features from Big Crit, Gangsta Boo, Devin the Dude, Jazz Cartier, Felix, The Mind. Uh, it's, it's just an incredible album. I think it's my best work yet, and so you should get it on vinyl at Vinyl We Please. Period. <laughs> I'm Carrie Foe, and I'm out. Bye. <laughs>